getting into League can be pretty difficult. Once you decide it's a game that you want to commit to, it's still hard trying to choose a role. Hey, what's going on summoners? My name is Nathan Ng, and today we're going to be diving into how to choose your main two roles. With five roles and hundreds of champions to choose from, it can feel a little bit overwhelming. Well, today we're going to be giving you a breakdown on what each role does, what playstyles they feature, and more. Hopefully by the end of the video, you'll have a solid idea of which two roles that you want to main. Let's not waste any more time and dive right into the video. Starting us off strong, we've got to talk about each role in League of Legends and what purpose they serve. In MOBAs, each role is meant to meet a primary goal for their team. Whether or not people want to accept it, League of Legends is a team-oriented game and is built around as such. While some roles may be more independent than others, they all work together and provide their allies with something. We will literally go from top to bottom, describing each role, their goals, and a few champions are able to dominate at a certain playstyle. Moving into our different roles, we've got the top lane. Top lane offers a lot of different playstyle options that can all share the same overall purpose. As a top laner, it's your job to generate pressure for your allies. This can be done by yourself or with your team, so let's check out a few of the main playstyles. One of the most common ways to generate pressure is to split push. Champions like Yorick, Camille, Fiora, Trindamere, and a few others excel at shoving in waves and taking turrets. Their primary goal is to generate pressure by constantly being on the opposite side of the big objectives and attempting to take the enemy's base. If left alone for too long, these champions can easily end the game by themselves. If you want to take on constant duels and love outplaying the enemy, the split pushing playstyle in the top lane is likely something that you'd enjoy. Another common playstyle in the top lane is to generate pressure with team fights as a tank. These are tanks like Malphite, Orn, Mundo, or Scion that can look to absolutely be meat shields for your allies. You generate pressure by tanking the enemy team and creating space for your team to fight in. If you're trying to be the front line in every fight, the playmaker, and be the unmovable tank for your team, then you'll likely enjoy the hyper tank playstyle. Next up with our team fighting roles, we've got our fighters. These are champions such as Darius, Riven, Renekton, and Irelia that look to join the fray and take on multiple enemies at once. You can think of them as a nice combination between a tank and a split pusher. These types of champions use their high damage and beefy defensive stats to stay in the fight for long periods of time, while also generating pressure as the enemy is forced to peel them off your carries. Overall, if you enjoy skirmishes and mechanical champions, then you'll likely enjoy the fighter playstyle in the top lane. There are a few other niche playstyles with the top lane, but they all try to meet the same goal of creating pressure for their team. Whether it's Auction because of his ability to swiftly assassinate targets, Singe because of his speedy poison, or Shen because of his high utility, there will always be a good option for you to choose from. Taking us into our next role, we've got the junglers. This role is often seen as the most influential and impactful role in the entire game. No matter what playstyle you choose in the jungle, your overall goal remains the same. You'll be looking to impact the map and secure objectives for your team. Let's dive into a few of the different playstyles and talk about how they approach this. One of the most common and classic playstyles is the ganking jungler. Champions like Nunu, Jarvan, and Rek'Sai excel at creating early game pressure for their team by ganking lanes in order to get their allies ahead. With their lead, they're able to safely secure objectives and participate in skirmishes with their team. No matter which champion you choose within this playstyle, they will all enjoy ganking on repeat and using their allies to generate pressure for objective control. Next up in the jungle, we've got our power farmers. These champions want to spike at level 6 or at 2 items, so that they can come online and dominate the game. While their subsections split up a little bit differently with their playstyle, they all have the same goal. They want to scale up, hit their power spikes, and take over the game. Some champions like Evelyn or Shivana are looking to hit level 6 for the massive increase in power. Others like Master Yi or Karthus are literal power farmers that are looking to get 2 or 3 items as fast as possible so they can 1v9 games. For our final primary category, we've got our skirmishers and fighters. These champions work as a good middle ground between the power farmers and the gank spammers. They look to take on aggressive fights in order to build the lead and use that lead to increase their power significantly. These are champions like Shen Zhao, Udyr, Belveth, Kindred, etc. Since they often offer high early game damage and extremely high snowball potential. If you're looking to wreak havoc and take on any and all fights, you'll likely enjoy this playstyle. That's it for our jungle playstyles, but similar to our top lane, there are a few niche styles and or combinations that we didn't cover. Again, we won't be able to cover all of them, but a few of these include champions like Zac, Viego, Ramis, Talia, etc. These champions fall into multiple of the main categories and have strong playstyles that you need to get used to. That being said, no matter what you pick, there's always going to be a good option and playstyle for you within the jungle. Before we continue on to our next few roles, we want to remind you all to check us out at ProGuides.com. With our new $7.99 monthly subscription, you can take your gameplay to the next level with some brand new course and bootcamp content. If courses and lessons aren't your thing, don't worry. We have challenger level coaches that are available 24 7 to help you out. As a member, you'll even get a 10% coaching discount. So, what are you waiting for? Go check us out and join the ProGuides family! Nonetheless, let's not waste any more time and dive right back into the video. Pulling us back into the video, we've got our mid lane. This lane looks to use its centralized location to impact the map in a ton of different ways. Similar to the jungle, mid laners really enjoy spreading out their lead and helping their allies in one way or another. 
While they may not have as much control as a jungler, their massive pool and versatility more than make up for it. Let's take a look at a few of their playstyles. Starting us off strong, we've got our fairly standard playstyle of mages in the mid lane. As a primary source of AP, mages can be split into two categories, control mages and high damage mages. Control mages such as Anivia, Victor, Vex, and Cassiopeia look to dominate skirmishes and teamfights by dealing a steady amount of damage while also creating space for their allies. We've also got our damage mages, which are looking to, well, deal a lot of damage. These include champions like Ari, Zerath, Vladimir, etc. Champions like this are often looking to reach the power spike and then deal as much damage in teamfights as possible. Whether you want to micromanage fights as a control mage or show the real definition of an AP carry as a damage mage, this playstyle is probably for you. Next up we've got our assassins. These are champions that are looking to dive into the enemy team and eliminate a priority carry as soon as possible. Champions like LeBlanc, Zed, Katarina, and Akali offer high damage early games with great mobility and insane burst. If you're a fan of ninjas and stylish outplays, you'll love assassins in the mid lane. No matter which assassin you decide to go for, they're all looking to be the enemy's worst nightmare. Last but certainly not least, we've got our roamers. These are champions that offer high wave clear and mobility, and they're looking to often impact the map by getting themselves fed by sending their lead elsewhere by ganking lanes. Champions like Talon, Uxian, Twisted Fate, and Talia all enjoy running around the map and using their leads to win elsewhere. Whether you pick Talon for his wall hopping or Talia for her wall riding, all of these champions are going to satisfy your wanting to impact other lanes. To no one's surprise, there are even more subcategories and different playstyles in the mid lane. We won't dive too deep into them, but there are some strong AD fighters like Yasuo or Renekton, hyperscaling AP champions like Kassadin, or something in between like Yone. There are even quite a few champions that overlap a lot of these playstyles and offer their own unique combination. No matter what you decide to choose, all of the mid laners will impact the map in their own way. Moving us into our next role, we've got our bot laners. Often referred to as ADCs, this role primarily looks to pump out consistent damage while also giving great objective taking power. As a bot laner, you have quite a few playstyles to choose from, so let's take a look at a few of them. Starting us off strong, we've got our early game fighters. These champions offer high base damage and are looking to use it to gain a massive early lead and snowball the game. This includes champions like Lucian, Samira, and Draven. With this lead, they're able to take turrets, secure objectives, and win fights with their team. Next up, we've got hyperscalers, which are the complete opposite of our previous category. This includes champions like Jinx, Aphilios, and Kogma, who are looking to scale and hit three items in order to dominate the game. While they have weaker early game stats, they more than make up for it with their amazing late game power. Last but certainly not least, we've got our utility marksmen. These are champions like Ash, Jin, and Varus who help their team out by providing wave priority and different utility. They are able to lock down enemies for their allies to follow up and also provide a decent amount of damage. Okay, there are a few of these champions that fall into none of these categories or into a mix of all three. You can have mages like Seraphine for utility, Vagar for scaling damage, Yasuo for follow up, etc. No matter what, if you enjoy pumping out damage, you'll likely enjoy the bottom lane role. Now before we move on to our final role, let's not forget about our favorite pro guide tradition. Today we want to ask you all, what was your original main role? For me it was ADC, I even have a lanyard that says AD carry on it. Which I, is not really popular with the ladies, but it doesn't matter, you know, it's, it's, it's who I am. But now I play jungle because ADC is not fun. <laughs> Everything kills you, you know? Anyway, be sure to let us know in the comment section below. Anyway, let's dive right back into the video. For our final role we've got our supports. This role dominates the game by providing their team with a variety of supporting tools as well as vision control. Being able to manage your team's vision and deny the enemies is a massive part of why supports are so strong. Let's take a look at a few of their playstyles. Starting us off strong, we've got the true embodiment of the support role with our enchanters. These are champions like Yumi, Lulu, and Soraka that look to empower their allies with heals, shields, and other utility while occasionally debuffing the enemy. They may have weaker early games, but they more than make up for it with their late game scaling. Next, we've got our engaged tanks that love to play as a frontline and playmaker for their team. They offer extreme levels of lockdown and fairly tanky stats so they can dive into the enemy. This includes champions like Leona, Rel, and Nautilus. With their kits, it's up to them to choose an enemy to lock down or use their CC to peel their carries. Finally, we've got our damage dealers. These are the non-traditional supports that can also be a bit controversial at times. This includes champions like Brand, Velkos, or Heimerdinger since they look to deal a ton of damage throughout the entire game. They are usually strong early on and then provide your team with an additional carry. Their support comes in the form of dealing damage to draw attention and remove key targets from a fight. Within the support champion pool, there are quite a few niche playstyles that combine a few of these groups or create their own entirely. Someone like Rakan is a weird mix between Enchanter and Engage, whereas a champ like Bard is made to roam and make plays. No matter what you choose, you'll dominate the game with your supportive tools and vision control. Now that we've covered the basics of each role and their multiple playstyles, let's talk about how to best pair them. When picking your two primary roles, there are a few questions to consider. One, 
Is this knowledge transferable? 2. Are there overlapping champions? And 3. Are there overlapping playstyles? A lot of roles are able to share multiple of these, and the perfect match will offer you all three. Let's name off a few great combos to help you get started. There are obviously far more of these ones, but these are great role pairings to get you started and thinking about your own mains. Top and mid are a great pairing due to the flexibility between their champion pools. While their lanes are different sizes, the ability to play champions like Malphite, Kled, Irelia, Aatrox, or Rangton mid lane makes it far easier to learn. On top of this, many mid laners are great at taking trades and punishing mistakes, which is vital in the top lane. This makes it so if a mid laner decides to go top, they're able to take advantage. Now, jungle and support may seem far off from each other, but they're actually pretty close in playstyle. They may not have any champion overlap, but there are definitely playstyle similarities between enchanters and champs like Ivern or power gankers like Nunu and supports like Nautilus. Alongside this, both roles heavily rely on vision control in order to help their allies and knowing where vision is placed and cleared is a massive advantage. Plus, once you master jungling, you'll understand great roam timers as a support. Mid and bot lane are a great pairing due to the fact that ADCs and mid laners both heavily rely on wave management, jungle tracking, and trading patterns. While only a few champions overlap, they do have similar playstyles. You can master early game damage dealers with Samira in the bot lane while also getting good at Katarina in the mid lane. If you prefer to scale, you can look to pick up Cassidy alongside Jinx. There's even a great middle ground of providing utility by playing Seraphine in both roles. Finally, we've got bot and support. Knowing how to play with the other role not only helps with their laning, but the knowledge of laning easily transfers between these two roles. While the champion themselves may not overlap, there are quite a few playstyles that are. If you main an early game fighter as an ADC, you'll enjoy engaged tanks or damage dealers due to their great early presence early on. That being said, the opposite is also true. Hyperscalers and enchanters both want to play safe in the early game and scale into absolute monsters later on. Mastering this playstyle within one role will make it significantly easier to learn it in the other. And that sums up our video for today. Don't forget to join our ProGuides family at ProGuides.com. We offer exclusive giveaways and classes that you won't catch anywhere else, so stay tuned and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you guys back in the next video, but until then, stay safe, stay healthy, happy holidays, and have a wonderful day. Peace.